Okay, so it's better if I disable the uh, I disable the waiting room so anybody can join, no problem. No, I cannot disable the, the meeting. The, okay, so for confidentiality, integrity, and for availability means if this money, you can get to the money, go to the money and take it at any time. This doesn't mean that this uh, or saving the money doesn't mean that you put it in a very far away from your hand or put it in a big hole or, or, or put it in a very far away uh, deep blue sea, for example. So uh, you have to put the money in a place and at the same time, you can get to the money, go to the money and take from it as you want. This is this is this condition must be uh, available too. This is availability. For example, I cannot close the bank and say I am saving the bank from uh, uh, from thieves. You cannot do that. You have to open the bank, let the customers come to the bank, and serve or introduce yourself. You cannot stop the service to the, for the sake of security. This is availability. So now we understand integrity, confidentiality, and availability. You want to protect anything, you have to take care of, the, of all of these, not only data and not only computer. You, are, you can protect anything, just take care of these three. Even we, we talk about a bodyguard. For the bodyguard to protect some movie star or something, so he take care of the confidentiality, so he takes the appointments, if anybody want to meet him, he can meet that guy with a, with a permission. Integrity means he, the bodyguard should keep the body of the movie star intact. Nobody can stab him or shoot him with a gun. Availability, this guy or the movie star should be available, means he can go and make movies and enjoy his time going to parties and do everything and at the same time he should be safe so we can say in total or in summary we can say that this triangle can be applied on anything even they study this triangle in uh, um, we can say the uh, the police police uh, of, uh, uh, colleges they, they study this triangle at the beginning of their study we have also added another two uh, uh, edges. The first one is authenticity and the, the second one is accountability. We have here confidentiality, integrity, availability. Those are the three edges from CIA Tri-8. And we added also to, uh, uh, accountability and authenticity, okay? Authenticity means you have to make sure of who sent the data. For example, you receive the data from who you, you, you received the, you received, sorry, you received this data from Ahmed. So you make sure this is Ahmed who is sent this data, nobody else, not a hacker. This is authenticity. And also accountability. Accountability means I have to track all the actions happened in the system and make sure if somebody made an action i make sure that he did that action nobody else i told you about this authenticity but this accountability means to relate each action to somebody or some object relation to join the actions and the entities in the system you have to take care of this relationship in accountability so I know who did that action in what time and in what location and on or, uh, in what uh, terminal or terminal device. And actually this is the most important. So defining some passive and active attacks here, we have two types of attacks actually, the passive attack and active attack. The passive attack means event dropping somebody uh, listening to a conversation. He don't do anything to the conversation. He just listen to the conversation. He don't do anything. The active attack, no. He 
he don't listen only, but he can he take the data as you see this this guy, this bad guy in the middle between Bob and Alice. He's taking the data and update it and send it back to Alice. So the data coming from Bob, Bob takes it, update it, and send it to Alice. So he, he's doing an attack, common attack called man in the middle attack. But here, Darth, uh, th that bad guy, he just listened to the conversation. Maybe he can listen to the conversation, taking passwords, taking uh, bank accounts, visa card numbers, and, the, and other very sensitive data. So this is passive and active attack. They are different. Okay. I think you can read all of these. All of these, you can read them, no problem. Non-repudiation. Non-repudiation means nobody can say it wasn't me. If you tell him you changed the salary of Dr. Osama, you changed the salary. He's, Dr. Osama is working in a, new, a university and an employee changed his salary. So you are telling him you uh, you are an I, IT and you you telling him that he changed the salary. He said no, it wasn't me. You should permit this type of situations in your company. You have to make sure of who did that action. And I told you told you about the accountability, and accountability is a service leads to non repudiation. Non-repudiation, nobody can deny his actions. Nobody or no user in your system can deny his actions. So anybody knows uh, or uh, any action, you know who did that action. Okay. And this is fundamental security design principles. Actually, this is theoretical part. You can read, you can uh, read them, no problem. If you have any doubt in one of them, you can tell me because this is very long. He is going to, um, he's going to explain each one of them in detail. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 items. He's going to talk about them in detail. So you read them. If you have any doubt, you can contact me to uh, tell you or to explain for you. Okay, so, okay, let's let's get to this. This is very important. Uh, here, this is model for network security. A message, you want to send a message. This is the sender, want to send it to the recipient through insecure channel here. This is a channel. You add a functionality of securing the message. And now the message is secure before sending it to through the channel. Then it goes into the channel in a secure way and then coming out to the recipient and do the opposite, the opposite functionality. He is securing here, unsecure, I mean, unsecuring, not unsecuring means that it is not secure, but for, for example, his encryption and here decryption. So this secure message format, can, he cannot read it. He, have, he has to transform it or she has to transform it to a readable message. So this is an operation and this is the inverse operation. And I think you understand it from cryptography lessons. Uh, this module is not, uh, is it should be familiar with, you are familiar with it. Because sending a message is like encryption and decryption exactly. So a message encrypted and then sent it to through the channel and then decrypted and then the recipient can read it. For the other model is, uh, uh, is the model of gatekeeper. Gatekeeper is important also. You have to take care of it because we are going to talk about defense in depth. I think you heard about the defense in depth. This is just to circulate circles of def defenses uh, and it, 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 one in, in the other. Like, okay, let me draw it for you. If we have, a, this is the, uh, the first circle. This is the second circle. This is defense in depth. So if we talk about the outer circle, 
the attacker want to get into our system. This is the data or the secure data. And he want to take this data or capture this data. He cannot, he cannot reach this data because we have many layers here. If he succeeded to, uh, to, pass, to pass through this data, he will not be able to succeed to pass this one. This is defense in depth. So how to make defense in depth? Using gatekeeper function. So the gatekeeper function, we have an opponent here standing in front of us and we have that guy, keep that uh, keeper. Maybe this keeper is just a firewall, hardware or software standing in front of our data, protecting it from the opponents. Opponents may be a hacker, may be a software like virus or worm, and this is the access channel. Why there is an access channel? I told you, you cannot close the bank just for the sake of security. You have to make your service available. Amazon, they have to open their website 24 seven. This is an access channel. If the hacker want to attack, he will attack through this, this access channel. So, so protecting this access channel is very important. Uh, so the, the, because th this is the only way, way the attacker warm virus can get into. For example, in your house, which place you protect the gates because the gates is the easiest way to get into the house. So here also we have to take care of the access point like website, the company is safe if it hasn't any in, uh, connection to the internet. But if it has a connection and it, it does has because it cannot, it cannot stay away from the wallet. So it opens the internet for its employees. This is just insecure channel and anybody can access the company data through this insecure channel. And that's all for chapter one. I think it's all about that. No, 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 nothing else. And if you have any doubt in any part, you can tell me. So let's open another one. Okay, you mean, doctor, the other parts, uh, just we like read it, we, we don't have to study it very well? No, everything you have to study it very well. I mean, oh. you can read it, it is easy to read, no need to explain it. Okay, okay. No, everything is, is uh, important, everything is mandatory, you cannot skip it. Okay. Uh, and for the second part, we can move to the second. Here, classical cryptography. This is also very intensive. I will share it for you. So uh, do you have any question in chapter one before moving to chapter two? No, doctor. Okay. Doctor, uh, we'll actually read it. If there's any doubt, uh, we'll contact you. I think you can access the, the lectures, the video lecture, right? You can access them. Yes, can, yes. Can yes. you access all of them? I think they are, they covered mostly uh, from chapter one to chapter five, I think, right? I just want to, uh, to I've ask you- I've not seen the videos actually, just- Yeah. Uh, I'm there in the classroom, I've joined, but I've not seen the videos yet. Okay. Uh, what I'm talking about is uh, to make sure that uh, you can access them because, you know, maybe it is private or not accessible. That's why but I think it's okay. I made it uh, unlisted, but I give you the link for the entire list so you can, you can see uh, all the listed videos inside it. Okay, so let's move to the challenging lecture, classical cryptography. Okay, I will, okay. I cannot skip all of this actually. But anyway, you give me just a second. Okay, and uh, now oh, this camera is not here. I will open the camera. 
I will share the camera with you, okay? Okay. Okay, let me see this one, do it. Okay, we start by hash function. This is just hash function. Hash, hash functions. Do you see it? It's clear? Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes. So actually, hash function is important if you want to, for example, send data between sender and receiver. We have the sender here and the receivers there. Hash function, hash function is a way to make sure that the message, we have a message here. This guy wants to send it to the receiver. So you make sure this message is went to the receiver without any change. How to make that? This is very important. This is very important functionality, which is integrity. I told you about the integrity in the first lecture. And here, to make sure the integrity, we make sure of it using the hash function. How to do that? We can do that. For example, if I ask you this number, one, two, three, four, and I put here, 10. I know a protocol between me and the receiver. The last two digits are the sum is are the sum of the other digits. For example, if this is the protocol or this is the function. So we have here one, two, three, four. We sum them one, two is three and three by th uh, plus three is six, six plus four is 10. So now the number is correct. So it goes to the receiver and he received the number as this way. And he do the same job. He sum up all of these one plus two plus three plus four. So he found the answer is 10. He checked this one. He found it 10. So he said this number is correct. This is the simplest way of making sure of the integrity of data. So for example, if this number is turned to be nine, the hacker here, the bad guy here, is standing in the middle and take the data and he change it. So he make it one, nine, three, four, 10, just to change this number from two to nine, to nine. What is gonna be the result? The result will be that the receiver will take the number and the sum one plus nine plus three plus four. He finds the answer to be, I think, 17. So he checks 17 with 10. The last one, he found this, this is not match, no match. So he knows exactly that this data is changing in the way. They call this is the, uh, the check or the error check. This is one kind of error checks. Okay, but here hash function is different. We have data and we create hash code, hash code. This hash code is sent to the receiver together and the receiver apply the same fu hash function and create another hash code. H, HC1. And he has that HC in, with the data, which is sent from the sender, and he check them together. He, if he found this match, so he said the data is correct or not to change it. If he doesn't have a match, he will say that this data is different. The simplest hash function here is mod. Mod function is the simplest hash function. Simplest hash function is to make just a mod 
like for example, we have here the function h of k equal k mod m. Okay, equal k mod m. So here, if we have a number like 12, this is 12 hours, and I have a number like uh, 24 mod 12 will equal zero. 25 mod, uh, mod 12 will equal one. I don't know if you know about this or not. The, the, remain, the remainder is one, just mod is the remainder. For example, if we have four by two, the remainder is zero. So four mod two equal zero. But five mod two equal one, just because five mod two equal one. I multiply two by two will give me four. The result is four. We have a distance of one. So this is the remainder. This is the simplest, the simplest way of having mod function. And we can apply this to long numbers. For example, I can apply it to a number like 0, 6, 4, 2, 1, 2, 8, 4, 8. Mod, for example, 1, 1, 1. This is going to be equal to 14. The receiver will take this data. This is the sender side. The receiver will take this data and apply mod function mod 1, 1, 1. And if he found that the remainder is 14, so he knows exactly this is correct data. If the remainder is not 14, so he knows that this is not correct data. We can apply the, uh, the uh, hash function at the sender and the receiver. The sender and the receiver make sure that they apply the same function. They know they have a protocol. They have a protocol between them. So they agree on which function that we, we are going to apply. So they know exactly which function they, go, they are going to apply. They apply the same function. So for example, we have another example here, H of 0371412 mod 111 equal to 65. So this is different. But here a problem, I will tell you about the problem here. What about H of 107405723? This is going to give us 14. The same output from that. And this is, this is called collision. And collision is not required, not good. This is very bad thing in hash function. We cannot have a hash function with uh, the, the different codes coming from different types of data. For example, I have a file A, file A, and it gives me hash code like SO, for example, and file two give me the same, file two, this is file one, file two is giving me the same hash code, which is SO. This is not true, this is not good. We have to get rid of this. Here, we get rid of this, uh, collision by just uh, jumping to the next number. So we remove 14 because we know it is assigned already and put 15 instead. But this is not actually in real world, not, not happening this way. Collision, we have to find a way to get rid of the collision in hash functions in a different way. Okay, uh, actually, uh, uh, the mod is not used in commercial applications, but actually we have two common, uh, two common, okay, let me re reverse back to the slides. Here, we don't use uh, mod, we use two different hash codes, the hash function, the first one is MD5, and the second one is char. And actually in our course, we will talk about char in detail. We will talk about char and even the internal implementation of char algorithm. Here I applied the hash function to uh, a software called 
uh, hash calc so actually you can do that on your own no problem or even uh, see the video for the application of the hash code on this software it is not mandatory uh, i think uh, i think it's not going to be in the exam or something but just for explanation this is just for explanation what about the types of cryptography or encryption we have cryptology divided to cryptanalysis and decryptography. Cryptanalysis means attacking or breaking the ciphers. And decryptography is impl implementing the ciphers or building the ciphers. Cryptography is divided into three types of, of algorithms. The first one is symmetric algorithm. The second one is asymmetric. The third one is protocols. The protocols like the protocol two. Uh, to exchange keys or do specific tasks in cryptography, not encryption and, in, and decryption, not symmetric or asymmetric. This is just changing uh, or exchanging keys or some kind of these algorithms. Mainly we will concentrate in our course about symmetric and asymmetric. We have uh, our, uh, you can say, uh, the second part of this lecture, if we have not not this lecture, actually of this course, if we divide this course into four parts, four parts, the first part is talking about introduction with mathematics and other things like uh, number theory. And the second part is talking about symmetric ciphers. And the third bar, part is talking about asymmetric ciphers. And the fourth part is talking about applications of these two types. The, the yes, sir, what do you mean course. by ciphers? What? I mean, what do you mean by ciphers? Ciphers, uh, uh, the ciphers, the algorithms, the algorithms. And show me in Arabic. Shafra, yeah, Shafra. Shafra, yeah. Shafra, cipher, yeah, Shafra. Yeah, actually, they have done the word with Arabic. Ah, بس هو ما يقصدش الشفره هنا هو يقصد الالجوريثم او الخوارزميه اللي بتبني الشفره دي اوكي okay. يعني مثل الفانكشن اللي هي بتساوي لها ابلاي على مثلا داتا بتعطيك شيء النتيجه تمام انكربتد يعني ايوه بالظبط هي الخوارزميه اللي بتطبقها على الداتا تطلع لك داتا سايفر يعني او سايفرز يعني تطلع لك شفرات تمام طيب uh, so symmetric cipher is divided into two types: block ciphers and uh, block ciphers and string ciphers. I will talk about each one of them in, in detail. Uh, the symmetric one is just sending the data together with the key from the sender to the receiver. So if this is Bob, Bob has a box and the box has jewelry inside it. He wants to send it to Alice. He uh, closed the. Uh, he put the jewelry in the box and they closed the box and they locked it. Locked, just using. Okay. So lock the. Uh, he locks the box and send the box to Alice together with the key. So the problem here is that uh, we have to send the key between sender and the receiver. Uh, so Alice will take the key and open the lock and then open the box and get the jewelry that came in from both. Here we have asymmetric. Asymmetric means we don't send keys. Actually, we send public information. This public information, if captured by the attackers here in this channel, will not use, will not be useful. Nobody can use it to uh, to understand the secure data. So here, Alice or Bob want to send something to Alice. Bob want to send something to Alice. If you see the arrows is different, but actually the situation is the same here. Bob want to send something to Alice. Here also, Bob want to send something to Alice, but in secure way or asymmetric way. Here, Bob, uh, Bob asks Alice to send her public key. So this public key is just the lock key. 
So I sent her box and the lock and Bob put the jewelry inside, inside this box and lock it with the Alice's public key. Take care of this. And then send the locked box back to Alice. Alice only, she is the only one in the world that has the private key. Because that public key is here, is, it belongs to her, so nobody else can has this private key. She is on, the only one she, uh, that can open the box and get the jewelry. You understand this? Yes, doctor. So we can say like the asymmetric is more safe. Yeah, you can say you can you can say asymmetric is more safe because because actually we don't send the keys. But you can, we can also, as I told you before, don't say that something is useful, something is not useful. Something is bad, something is good. No, you can say asymmetric is used in secure applications. If the most important feature of the, of the application is security. And for, for symmetric, if the speed is the most important feature, so you can pay okay. off so, some security. So some of them have disadvantages and advantages. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So some, we can use both of them. You, uh, actually, uh, both of them, both of them are important, and they are used even right now in uh, modern applications. Okay, okay. So both of them are used even. Now we, we use the, uh, the sending the key is done by asymmetric protocol. So we can use symmetric encryption, but we send the key using asymmetric protocol. I will talk you, with you about that in the, uh, in the corresponding chapter, chapter. Okay, so this is uh, the main uh, two categories that we are to, going to talk about in the entire course. Uh, symmetric and asymmetric, we'll talk about uh, this and AES, and we'll talk about for, for asymmetric, we will talk about RSA and elliptic curve. Here, we introduce the most basic symmetric key encryption, Caesar cipher, okay? Caesar cipher is simply shifting the letter. For example, if we have here the sentence meet you in the park, we can change the order of the letter. Uh, doctor, sorry, uh, your voice wasn't clear. Can you repeat? I mean, your, your voice wasn't clear. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, this is the most basic symmetric key or symmetric key encryption, which is uh, Caesar cipher, okay? And that Caesar cipher is simply shifting the letters of alphabet. It's kind of substitution. It's not actually a shift of letters, but it is substitution. So I get, I remove M, for example, I remove M, I put another letter instead of M. And I remove E and put another letter instead of E and so on. Okay, I think it's better if we use our pen and paper. But this way, uh, this way we'll not be able to finish the four, uh, four uh, chapters. So at the beginning, if you have any question, specific question in a specific chapter, you tell me, okay? Anybody prepared some questions? Doctor, uh, just let us finish this one because we have some questions depending on the first chapters. Okay. We have also uh, the third chapter and fourth. They are filled with uh, mathematics. But anyway, 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 uh, or if you have any question, you tell me this is better because if you have any question, this means that you studied the material and you still have doubt in specific part. So here I open my camera and then let's see how.
Okay. We open this here. In the next, okay. Yes, it's here. We'll take some examples from this one. Okay, here we have, for example, if you want to encrypt the, uh, this sentence, which is stop global warming. Stop global warming, okay? This sentence, I want to encrypt this sentence using Caesar cipher. I think, This is the simplest way and it is not used. It's just for education purposes, but actually if you understand it, you will understand many concepts in cryptography. So we have letters here, the alphabets, English alphabets is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, P, Q, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay, I'm teaching, I'm teaching my child this one. Okay, so this is A, B, C, Q, U, Z. And then now I want to shift. This shift is important because this is the secure key. If the attacker knows the key or the shift, he can decrypt the data. So for example, if the shift is three, this means I want A or I want zero, one, two, three. I want D to come here. So this is D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now it's a circle. This is a mod. I will tell you about the equation right now. The equation simply uh, K mod 26. So if it's finished 26, so it returns back to A again. So it is A, B, C. Now I want to encrypt this sentence, stop global warming. I want to, uh, to send it to the receiver, but in encrypted way. So I take S, I search for the corresponding value for S. Here I put, I think, stop, let me see, stop global warming. So I put, uh, I think we have a shift here, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, N, O, P, you are here, S here. So what the upper S? Oh yes, he didn't use, he, did, he just used the key of 11. So key of 11 will, will not get us the same result. So let's remove this to get along with the slides. I remove this to get along with the slides. So. The shift is not three, actually the shift is 11. This means this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. This means 11 here will come to this place. L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, and then circulate back. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. With K coming to N. Now I want to uh, use uh, this key to encrypt this sentence. I look to S here. S is changed with D. So S is changed. 
I write down it back here, stop global warming. So S is changed to D because S is together with D right now. So I put D, where is T? T is E, so it is E. And what is O? O is Z. And what is P? P is A. And so on. You can uh, find G. G is R. And uh, W, Z, M, I. Okay. W, H, L, C, X, T, R, Y. You find this in the slides. Okay, but you understand now how to encrypt. Encrypt means now I can send this data to the receiver, the receiver or the recipient. Nobody can understand this data because it is not it is not English. It is something different. But if the attacker knows this is a shift with eleven, he's going to use the opposite the opposite way, which is looking from down to top. Looking from down to top means. I look at D here from top from top to bottom to, uh, uh, from bottom to up. Okay, so he is looking to D and then he finds it S. So he changes to S, and E is going to be changed to T, and so on. So he's going to get the same sentence back. He can the hacker can understand the data, the secure data. This is all about uh, Caesar cipher and how it is working. But actually, Caesar cipher is not too strong because it has some vulnerabilities. OK, let me share the screen with you. Share, share the slides. Here, we have these vulnerabilities. We can attack the Caesar cipher even without knowing the key. I don't know the key. I can use. Letter frequency. By guessing and... the key. What? Guessing, yes. By guessing the key, maybe. Yeah, you can guess the key, actually. Uh, but we have four multi ways of finding the key. Either to use letter frequency analysis, and this is coming from English, because English contains, uh, if you look at any page in English, you will find some letters is repeated compared to others. Here, this is statistics, and this is statistics is fixed to all text in English, approximately the same ratio. For uh, letter frequency analysis, we can use letter frequency analysis for the encrypted data, and then use the same that uh, the same thing used for uh, clear data, and we will we can do the matching. Here, we can try for brute force analysis, we can try all possible keys. All possible keys are 26 keys. You can try all of them until you find the key. Or tracing single spaced letters, if you are encrypting data and you are leaving space between, uh, between words. If you do that, it will be very easy for the attacker to find uh, the letters, the single letters like I, A, and find other letters like N, F. This is very small. Uh, no, they, they don't have too much letters. And also, they are repeated in the uh, in, in very few places that can be guessed, actually. So F and A is. And also, we can combine between the two letters and the three letters like 2, T-O, and the T-O-O. -O. 2 and 2. You can also. Uh, you can combine, if you are clever in English, you can combine these letters to, together and extract the secure data. For the first one is letter frequency analysis. We know that English, any English in, in the world, any text in, in English, uh, if you count how many E's, you find the percentage of E's in that text will be 11 percentage. And A is this the most frequent letter, E. Even here, let's count how many is here. E1, 
you see this is two, three, four, five. It's repeated too, too much. So here, E, E, here, frequency two times, letters two times, cipher text two times, nine one time. So the word E, the, the letter E is repeated. Mostly, uh, it is the most frequent letter. Followed by A, taking eight percentage, and followed by R, which is taking seven percentage. And using these character characteristics, we can we can breach the Caesar site. So, for example, if you look at these letters, you'll find the letter, which letter is repeated, K. This is the most repeated letter, K, one, two, three, four, it's repeated four times. You can guess that K is E, and then go to the uh, alphabets and arrange according to this shift. K, yes, yes, sir. yeah, so E is, is, is shifted to E is uh, shifted to K, so you can guess the remaining or the other. You can you can construct the key. Okay, uh, doctor. Yes. بس عفواً ممكن تعطينا بس ثلاث دقائق بريك بس نروح نصلي أنا راح يأدي. طيب مش. Okay. بس ثلاث دقائق لو سمحت. Okay, so break for five minutes. Okay, and then we return. تمام. See you.